All right, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how to code a text-based game in Python. The player has to move through a series of rooms, collect an item in each room, and you have to have all the items collected in order to beat the boss and win the game. So a good way to start out this project is by making a map that shows the location of all the rooms and the locations of any items in each of the rooms, as well as the directions of each room relative to the rooms next to it. You also want to label your starting room as well as your boss room. I used a website called Lucidchart to make this map because it's free and it's what we use in a lot of my classes. I'll put the link in the description, but you could do just as well with Microsoft Paint. So to start out, we're going to need a couple of functions that we're going to be using throughout the program. The first one's going to be called prompt. This is basically just something that displays at the start of the program. It shows you the title of the game, the object of the game, as well as any moves you can use. I have it copied and pasted right here because the text formatting is a little tricky, but this is what mine looks like. It's just going to be a print statement followed by an input where we're going to tell the user to press any key to continue. That's it for our first function. The next one is going to be called clear. And for this one, we're just going to need to do an imp import at the top here. We're going to import OS. And this function is just going to clear the screen. So we're going to do os.system and it's going to be cls if os.name equals nt, which is Windows. Anything else is going to do clear. And that's going to be for your Mac or Linux machines. That's just going to clear the screen. And to keep it pep8, we're just going to do two new lines at the end of a function definition. And let me just put some comments here. All right, next we're going to create our map for the game, which is going to be a dictionary. And it might be helpful to pull up your picture of your map here right on the side. And in this dictionary, every key is going Going to correspond to a room in the map and every value is going to be a dictionary containing the direction of the adjacent rooms and the room that it's uh, pointing to. So it's going to look a little something like this. We'll start out with our starting room which is liminal space is the key and the value is a dictionary. We're going to say north corresponds to the mirror maze and south corresponds to the bat cavern and i'll show you one more here the next entry is going to be the mirror maze and it doesn't really matter what order you do but i like to have the starting room first so the mirror maze is going to have south corresponding to the room we were just in which is liminal space and it's also going to have its item held here which is the crystal now i've gone ahead and filled out the rest of the dictionary so you don't have to watch me type it all out and this is what it looks like we have all of our rooms all of the adjacent rooms and what direction they're in any items in any of the rooms and as you can see there's no item in the starting room and the boss room which is dojo in this case has an item with the key boss and the value the name of the boss the next thing we need to do is create a couple variables that are going to be used to track some of the information throughout the game so the first one we're going to need is a list of vowels and we're just going to call that vowel if I can spell it right and we're gonna type in a e i o u and we're gonna use this just in a moment you'll see why the next thing we're gonna need is a list to track the inventory of the player so this is gonna be we'll just call it inventory and it's gonna start off empty as the player picks up any items they're gonna be added to the inventory and the next thing we want is a variable that's gonna keep track of what room the player is in so we're gonna call that current room and initialize it with the starting room which in my case is called the middle space now we just need a variable to keep track of the result of the last move and we're gonna call that message and initialize it as an empty string. That's going to get updated after every turn and displayed to the player. Now at the start of the program we just want to run clear to clear the terminal of anything and we're going to display our prompt and the rest of the program is going to be held within a gameplay loop which is going to be a while loop. We're going to say while true which basically loops until we tell it to stop looping. There's three ways that it'll stop looping by a win, a loss, or if the user types exit at any time. And this loop represents the player's turn so each time the player makes a move this loop is going to iterate one time. So at the start of every term we just want to clear Clear the terminal and then display some info to the player. We're just going to print out an F string that says you are in the current room, give it a new line and then show their inventory and it's just going to print out their inventory and then one more new line and we're just going to do a dash character and multiply that by 27 because that's the right length and then we're going to display the last turn message, print out MSG. And we can test this out right now. So this is what our title screen looks like. Press enter and this is an infinite loop actually so I'm going to kill it. The next thing we're going to make is an item indicator so we're going to do if item in rooms current room dot keys so if there's an item in the room the player is currently in we're going to set it equal to nearby item rooms current room item and then if that item isn't already in their inventory we're just going to print a message saying you see the item depending on the name of that item whether it's plural or singular or it starts with a vowel this is what we're going to use that vowels list for we're going to want to output the message a different way so the first branch is if nearby item at index negative negative one, which is the last letter in the word. So if the last letter is an S, we're just gonna print out an F string that says U, C, nearby item. And then elif, nearby item, at index zero, which is the first letter in vowels. So if the first letter in the name of the item is a vowel, we're gonna print out an F string that says U, C, and nearby item, else, 
So if the item is singular and starts with a consonant, we're gonna print out, we're gonna print an F string that says UCA nearby item. And that's it for our item indicator. I'll put some comments just for clarity. And that does it for the item indicator. So the next thing we're gonna do is the boss encounter. So this is only gonna trigger if boss is in rooms, current room dot keys. So if you're in the boss room, we're gonna put a win condition and a lose condition. For the lose condition, the way you win the game is by having all the items. So the way you lose the game is by not having all the items. If the length of your inventory is less than six, in my game there's six items total. So however many items you have in your game, you're just gonna put if len inventory is less than that number, you're gonna print the lose message, which is an F string. You lost a fight with rooms, current room, boss. So make sure that these uh, quotes right here are single quotes or just different quotes than these outside quotes because you don't want to end the string too early. Um, so this is our lose condition and now we're going to do our win condition. We can just say else. So if the length of your inventory is not less than six, in other words you have six or more items, there's only six, but uh, we're going to print you beat rooms, current room, same thing, boss, and then we'll do an exclamation point because that's awesome. And just remember after you print that win or lose message you want to break to end the loop and end the program. Okay so now that all those checks are done we can accept the player's move as input we can just call it user input equals input enter your move and just follow that with a new line and there's three different kinds of moves the user can make so they can either go a direction get an item or exit the game by typing exit so we're going to take whatever they enter and we're just going to split their move into its individual words we're going to call that next move equals user input dot split and we're just going to split it on a space character now the first word of their move is going to be whatever action they're trying to do so we're going to say action equals next move at index zero which is the first word and we're just going to give it title case to normalize the case that way they can type it in all caps all lowercase and it's just going to get turned into title case so it won't matter how they type it in and if the length of their next move is greater than one meaning there's more than one word in it we're going to save the second word to item as well as direction because the second word can either be an item they're getting or a direction they're going in the case that it's an item sometimes it can be more than one word say you want to call it car keys or something like that we're just going to do next move and use a list slice to get the second word as well as any words following it and the direction is only ever going to be one word so we're just going to do next move at index one dot title and since this item right here could be multiple words we're just going to have to join them with a space so we're going to do item equals a space character dot join and then we can give it title case just like the other one now the rest of the loop is going to be a conditional statement that executes code based on whatever action the player enters so the first branch is going to be for moving between rooms and we're going to do if action is go make sure it's title case because that's what we normalized it to we're going to try to set current room to the room in the direction that they chose and if that works we're going to set message to an f string that says you travel direction and then if that doesn't work if they enter a direction that doesn't exist or there's no room in that direction we're going to do accept and just set the message to an f string that says you can't go that way and that's it for moving between rooms so the next branch is going to be for picking up items we're going to do elif because it's part of the same branch action equals get make sure it's title case again we're gonna do if the item they try to pick up is in the room and if it's also not already in their inventory we're gonna try to add it to their inventory by doing inventory dot append and then set the message to an f string that says item retrieved and then if it is in their inventory we just set the message to an f string that says you already have the item and then this last piece here is if they try to enter an item that doesn't exist or if it's not in the room they're currently in, we're just going to set the message to another F string that says can't find item. Now this line here will actually throw a key error if there's no item in the room. So what we're going to do is turn this into a try. So we're going to try that. And then if it doesn't find an item, we're going to do an accept. And we're just going to put the same thing as before, which is can't find item. Okay, so we have branches for the go command and the get command. The next command we want to do is for exit. So elif action equals exit. Make sure it's title case. Just break, which exits the loop and ends the game. Now for anything else the player types in, we're just going to say that it's invalid. So any other command invalid and do else and we can just set the message to a regular string that says invalid command and that pretty much does it for gameplay so we can test it out by uh, running this right here we have our title screen the, our title of the game the object of the game any commands hit enter we start off in the starting room with an empty inventory and we can try to do get item get keys it's gonna tell you that you can't find we're gonna go east we see Altoids 
Try to pick them up, adds to the inventory just like that. Gonna get the next item, we're gonna go north, you can't go that way. And just for example, let's say you say go tacos, you can't go that way either. Just try input validation. Anything else you enter, it's not going to break the program. That's usually a sign that you did something right. So right now we're in the bazaar. I believe we can go north. And we're in the meat locker. Go east. Get robe. Get that staff. One more room over here. Where are we? The volcano. Go west. Go north. Then we're just going to get the crystal. And then we can go south. Go east. Go east. And we make it to the boss room. And we have all six items. So we beat the shadow man. Exit command works great. I'll run it one more time to show you what a loss looks like. If you go in with no items or less than six items, you lose a fight with the shadow man. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So there is one more feature that I think takes this to the next level. It's pretty cool if we just go to the top here and do it from PIL import image image dot open whatever the name of your map file is here you can just type that in mine's called map.png image dot show now whenever you run this program at the start of it it's going to open up a picture of your map so if you want it to be a little bit easier you can show the player the map or if you want it to be a little bit harder you can let them play through it blind um, I think both ways are pretty fun but just to show you it pops up the map right there yeah pretty much the whole game and yeah so if you want to see this code this whole repository is going to be up on my github I'll put a link in the description Try to make your own game, get creative with it. Don't just do random rooms like I did. Uh, maybe give it a cool plot and let me know in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. I'm going to be posting some more coding tutorials. So hit subscribe, hit like, stay tuned, and I'll see you probably next week. All right, bye.